Mitchell is responsible for overseeing the general operations of the Division of Grants and Local Services, the Office of Human Rights, the Office of Community Involvement, and the Office of Statewide Recruitment. Under M Mr. Mitchell's guidance, California State Parks has become the recognized leader in development, implementation, and ma management of innovative park grant programs in the excess of $2 billion. As a senior ex executive, executive, sorry, he is a member of the State Parks Director's Court e Executive Team. Prior to, jo prior to joining California State Parks, he worked for for 15 years with the California Legislature, where he served as the District Chief of Staff to State Senator Patrick Johnston and as a Senior Consultant to the Senate Appropriations Committee. Mr. Mitchell is a graduate of California State University, Stanislaus, and the California Leadership Institute. He is the past chair of the National Association of Outdoor Recreation Liaison Officers and has received numerous awards and honors, including recognition from the California State University System as one of their outstanding alumni. Please welcome Cedric Mitchell. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, members. It's an honor to be here to speak with you today about some programs that we have at California State Parks. Um, one of the things that we strive for at California State Parks is that we want everyone to experience grandeur of outdoors, not necessarily just for the nature-based benefits that come from that, but, but when you connect to nature, there's so many other benefits that come from that, including just discovering yourself, discovering the many things that you're able to do. But what we strive for is to, to connect nature with your everyday life. Um, I'd like to speak to you tonight about our Outdoor Youth Connection Program. The Outdoor Youth Connection Program is a leadership development program that we started about 10 years ago. Um, and that program, uh, we focus on young people between the ages of 13 and 17, where we bring them out for three days and two nights uh, here in Southern California. It's held at Castaic Lake. And during that time, uh, we go through a series of, of activities aimed at allowing you to develop to your highest potential. Um, we have uh, this program. We've had approximately 2,000 graduates that have come through the program over time. And the program is really geared toward breaking down barriers and really uh, looking at um, California's young leaders in a way that maybe the, that we hadn't before. So I'd like to just take you through a little bit of what happens when you come to that program and the expectations that come afterwards. And then I'd like to maybe talk to you about a couple of other programs that we have um, that also we believe might be of, of use to you. Now, the important thing to note is that all of our programs are not geared to supplant anything that you're currently doing. Uh, it's our desire to really have you um, to, to, to be a supplement to what you're doing. Our goal is to help you to reach the goals that you've set for your community and hopefully the skills and talents that you bring back are skills that you'll use to help advance your community. First of all, um, young people such as yourselves come from all over the state. Um, here in Southern California, we have had um, uh, graduates come from as far as San Diego and far to the north of, of, of us, we've had uh, individuals come from the greater Bay Area in the north. Um, we serve actively about 19 different counties, and there are young people who have a desire to see greater things in their communities. Um, we, we, we start the activity by, uh, it's a three-day and two-night experience, as I mentioned. Um, the way it starts out, when you arrive with us, we will um, do a survey, and that survey is just to get a baseline. Don't know if you've camped before. How many of you have camped? Okay, good. Okay. How many of you have um, find yourself with a great love for nature? Okay. Good. How many of you are just not sure about it yet? All right. Good. Okay. So one of the basic concepts that we start with is this. Typically, what happens when someone comes to you and says, we want you to come out and we want you to come to our park and we want to teach you about nature, we want to do all those things. I'm going to ask you to do something for me just for a moment. I want you, if you would, just to close your eyes for a moment and take a deep breath. All right. I want you to let it out and take another deep breath and let it out. Now what I'd like for you to do is I want in your mind's eye is to remember the time when you first connected to nature. Wherever that was, just remember what you felt like, remember what you saw. Take a deep breath for me 
and let it out. I want you to remember the sounds that were happening at that moment in time. Take a deep breath and let it out. I want you just to remember the feeling that you were having at that moment in time. Take a deep breath and let it out. And now what I'd like for you to do is I want you to, when I ask you to open your eyes, to look at the person next to you and look at the smile that's on their face. Open your eyes, look at the person next to you, look at the relaxed feeling that they have, and all of that. And the reason I did that is that what we want is for that experience that you had, that personal connection that you made, we want that personal connection to happen. So we're not, this particular leadership camp is not about an environmental program. We're not going to bring you out to try and teach you to become a new ranger or become our staff. What we want is for you to develop your skill sets. We want to inspire you to be able to come back and be as, even more creative than you already are. But more importantly, we want you to have that, um, that moment that many of you have had where you develop your own personal connection to nature. What we have found is that that moment will stay with you for a lifetime. And at that point, we all know that if it stays with you, you'll enjoy, you'll engage, and you'll want to hunger for more. So when you come to us, the first thing we do is we get an assessment. We want to know um, how you're feeling. We want to know some things about you. We'll want to know if you've camped or anything like that. And then we'll have you enter a diary entry just about what you're feeling at that moment in time. And you'll be joining about 60 or 80 other young people from around the state here. And we'll begin a process that um, just getting to know each other. We spend a lot of time breaking down barriers, doing hands-on activities. And we have a video that I'm going to show you that will give you an idea of what happens. You'll get to know other people from, from other parts of, of Southern California. And you'll also begin to identify who your new team members are going to be during that time. The thing to understand is that at this camp, um, you will be responsible for cooking the meals, for cleaning up afterwards, for setting up your tents, for making sure you have shelter. And what we'll do is coach you through all of that process. And the cool thing about it is that as you're doing all of this, you're going to be gaining new friends, you'll be, you'll be excited about the new opportunities, and every moment there will be something that you'll be waiting to do that's going to be a little different. We'll take you through the exercises of getting to know each other. We'll break you into teams. And the first day, we start with some of the basics. And while you may know how to set up a tent, we're going to teach you how you set up a tent when you've got 30 people that you're responsible for. We're going to teach you how to do that so 30 people can set the tents up. So we'll have you, we'll go through tent setup, we'll go through how you use propane, we'll go through all those basics of camping, how to roll a sleeping bag, and all of those kinds of things. But after that, We'll then set up camp, and then we'll begin after camp is set up for you preparing the first meal. Now, you should understand, at our camps, we don't believe in having hot dogs and hamburgers. That's not what we do. The first night's meal will be a pasta dinner that you'll prepare, and uh, we will enjoy. And it will be pasta and salad, etc. cetera. The, um, we'll, end it, we'll end the afternoon that evening with a campfire where we'll get to know each other a little bit better. We'll have a surprise a dessert that we'll do together. And we'll prepare for the next day. Usually the first day ends around 10 o'clock, and you'll be in your tents. Um, and uh, you can still stay up and talk, but everyone's in their tents. And we'll start the next morning at 7 a.m. And I know some people kind of go, what, 7 a.m.? I saw you right there. You go, Sarah, you said, what, 7 a.m.? Yes, 7 a.m. <laughs> um, we start our camp. And that means that some of you who are assigned to um, kitchen cooking will be up and you'll have the kitchen smelling great. Um, your teams will be going. The others of you who will have other responsibilities, I won't share with you what all those are, but you will be up and doing and getting ready, so you're getting ready for the day. The thing that we always let people know is that if you wake up at 5 in the morning because you want to see the sunrise, just don't wake me up because... Um, I want to get my hours in. Uh, so we'll have you get up, um, and uh, yeah, you laugh when I say we will get up at 5 to see the sunrise. But we'll find that most, many young people, well, they, they witness their very first sunrise, and they're amazed by the colors of the sky. And even though it rises every day, every morning, you really don't have the opportunity to experience a sunrise, and you will at this camp.
The, the, so breakfast is served and we have our time. And again, we're not going to have Pop-Tarts. We're going to have um, ba- uh, breakfast burritos and fruit and other things. Um, we, don't, we do wash dishes, so we're not using paper. And I'll tell you, many of our surveys suggest that that's the most fun time that young people have is washing the dishes. And you might surprise yourself because that's when new friends are made. Um, We'll take you through, after that, a series of activities that are hands-on. I won't tell you what those are. You'll have to come to experience them. But I can tell you this, that your energy levels will rise, your thoughts, because what we do in the morning is getting you ready to think and work as a team to communicate well and to develop the kind of leadership skills that are not just about telling people what to do, but knowing when to listen and knowing when to help and knowing when uh, where you can fit in with the group so that each of you, all of us A-types that do this kind of stuff, understand that we can have a successful camp. So the morning is filled with a series of rotations and activities that are hands-on and fun. The afternoon uh, after lunch um, is filled with additional fun activities. We do some water-based activities. We put people into kayaks. We put them in stand-up boards. We do uh, activities on the lake. It's all about empowerment and encouragement and very positive energy that we do. We finish the afternoon with, um, again, Another activity that has to remain a surprise because you have to see it to believe it. And then um, we finish the night with, again, you cooking our dinner and us enjoying some additional campfire activities that you all will be presenting. Um, It sounds kind of vague at times, but the mystery of doing this is just as much fun as the actual activity. So I can't tell you everything, but I can only tell you that we've had over 2,000 folks graduate And I have yet to say someone or have them say that they didn't have a great time. Um, um, We end it on the the third day. Um, We're usually finished by noon. And for all of this, we ask a couple of things of you. One, that you will lead, plan, lead, and execute an outdoor outing for your community, whatever that might be. Whether it be hiking, whether it be camping, whether it be a day trip, whether it be cycling, Whatever it is that your peers or your families in your community can take part in. And we've had young people who have done a wide variety of activities. They've arranged river trips. They've arranged camping trips. They've done kayaking. They've done a number of different things to help encourage them in doing outdoor recreation. And and the second thing that we ask of you is that you do a public service project that is important to this community. We have a wide range of public service projects that have been done, from things like park cleanups to to doing a senior prom with the senior citizens in the community to you name it. It really has to be about the creativity and need for your community, and it has to be from your vision that 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 project is going to be uh, um, put together. We just left last night the Oxnard City Council where we were um, uh, sharing with the city council about their meetup cleanup project that the graduates put together. And they they did this in uh, uh, a couple of parks there, and they created a garden and did a number of things. And this is a monthly project that they're doing. They involved everyone (laughs) from the fire department to the police to volunteers to their their urban core or their, their city core. The park, I mean, the Parks Department, and it was a wonderful experience for them to see that, the community coming together, and the council really excited about the work that they're doing. So the purpose of the camp is really about finding out just how great you are, and it's about finding out how you can come back and, d- and do something extraordinary for the people in your community. Already you are exhibiting the talents of being a leader and the willingness to step forward and be commissioners. That's a courageous act that you've done. And so what we're saying is that we want to help you, if we can, just to give you some additional skills. We're not going to stop what you're doing. We don't want to change what you're doing. But we want to be a part of what you're doing. Together we can make a true and lasting difference in the way the history of our state is going to be. We can make that change. You know, I hear a lot over time, and I've worked with young people for about 25 years. When I was a young person, uh, I was working with young people, Um, and I'm still very young. Don't don't laugh. (laughs) Um, 
the um, the thing that I hear often is, you know, well, teens they don't want to work, they don't want to do the, they don't want to do this, they just want to watch TV, they just want to do um, different things. And what we're saying is that no, that's not true. Over the 2,000 graduates that have graduated from Outdoor Youth Connection, now, mind you, I'm going to give you these numbers, and they are true numbers. Of those 2,000 graduates, they have planned and executed outdoor outings for over 14,000 others from their communities. For the public service projects, they have organized public service projects that have impacted over 28,000 additional people from those respective communities. It is truly about young people making a difference. And that project that I talked about in Oxnard, it was the youth who were leading the police officers and the, the fire department and the professionals who were working. They are the ones that were telling them what projects need to be completed and how it needed to be done. They were the ones organizing the volunteers and making a, a lasting difference. So it's really about several things. And I ask this of you, and I've asked it of my staff, and I ask it of, of the graduates of our program. And it's a simple question, and you don't have to answer it now. But the question is, how do you want history to remember you? How do you want history to remember you? Now, I will tell you, from my personal standpoint, I want history not necessarily to remember my name, but I want them to remember the fact that I existed on this planet and that what we did was extraordinary, not by myself, but with the group of people that I was associated with. If you can find in yourself that you want history to remember, not necessarily your name, but remember the deeds that you have done, remember that this generation made the difference that changed the course of America's history, then you have the opportunity to do something extremely extraordinary in your lifetime. We tell everyone it has to matter that you existed here. It has to matter that whatever job you are doing, that you were the one chosen so that you can bring your own flavor to it. You can bring your own style to it. And the collective of what we create is something that will be extraordinary. All of this is much greater than any one of us. But together, each of us can leave a footprint in the sand that will be remembered for a lifetime and for several lifetimes. So that's kind of the Outdoor Youth Connection Program. And in your folder, we have several dates, and the dates are filling up fast. And we can share with you what those are um, if you all are interested. We'd love to have you all and have members in your community. We only work with public agencies and nonprofit organizations. We don't take individual signups. And that's because we believe strongly that um, once you go through the program, that the adults and the organizations need to continue to be supportive of your efforts. And that infrastructure is the way that we find success. Um, so I'd like to queue up this video for the Outdoor Youth Connection, and then I'll answer any questions that you might have. Yes, that's me in the middle. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! The Outdoor Youth Connection is a three-day camp experience that features leadership skills training, team building, and outdoor activities for youth ages 13 through 17. Hi, my name is Janice, and what I remember and like about the camp last year for OYC is the campfire, which was really fun because we played games and the s'mores were good. And I like the swimming. It was really chill and cool. And I like where our tents were set up and how the sky was at night. OYC participants get to leave the city 
unplug completely from technology and camp overnight in a California state park. Hi, my name is Devin. I'm from Freeman Community Center Park. Um, I'm here to talk about my experience at the OIC camping trip. The OIC camping trip was really good. Even though it was like extremely hot, really dry, they really brought us together as a whole group. Like they would make us cook together, clean up together, interact with each other, play together, and we just had a good time overall. They learned basic camping skills, such as how to set up a tent, how to roll out their sleeping bag, and how to cook in the great outdoors. My name is Nick Wilson. I'm from Orlo Park. And when I went camping, paddle boarding was usually really fun because the water calms me down. And then cooking because it was actually really good. And, you know, we cooked it, so we're obviously pretty good cooks. But it was also really hot, so you had to drink a lot of water. And it was pretty fun overall. The OYC experience challenges them through games and activities that almost force their inner leader to surface. Throughout the camp, they build camaraderie with teens from all over the city. Look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. Give us some, yeah. All right, now, bring it back up. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. That's what they struggle with. Yeah. All right. Hi guys, my name's Rhiannon and I work at Wardlow Park. This past summer, I had the opportunity to go camping with some of our teens at OYC. One of the highlights for me was getting to see my teens work together without the distractions of their cell phones, and also connecting with other teens from all different parts of Long Beach. My name is Janetta. What I liked about OYC is the tents. I never built a tent before, so it was, it was fun to do it. Hi, my name is Robert and I am with the Freeman Teen Program. The OYC is great for the teens of Long Beach because it allows teens to explore themselves away from the city life. My name is Narith Petch. I believe the OYC is a great opportunity for teens to experience nature in its natural environment. Being able to go out fishing, pitching up a tent, and do storytelling under the night star is a wonderful experience for teens. Hello, my name is Gail McGinnis and for the camping trip that we went on, it was extravagant, fun, and exciting. The ride there was amazing. The staff, the friends that we got to meet, the, camp, the fishing, the kayaking, the paddle boarding, and the swimming. Everything there was amazing, and everybody else there was amazing too. Um, that was from the city of Long Beach. Um, they had five different centers that came and they produced this video. Um, I, one last thing I will add, we do charge for the class. Um, it is um, uh, for, includes five meals, uh, the, um, the equipment, we have sleeping bags, tents, all the propane, et cetera, that, we, that is needed. Um, the only thing you would have to bring is pretty much your pillow and uh, the right attitude and um, being prepared to have fun, uh, your own personal toiletries that you would need. Um, we charge $35 for the class. Uh, obviously, we subsidize that. Um, that $35 is per person, um, and it's for the full three days. Um, so I open it to any questions you might have. Yes? Where can our viewers find out more information about the class? They can at our website, uh, which is in the brochure here that we have given you. Um, but uh, it's at the State Parks website, uh, California State Parks. It's uh, www.parks.ca.gov, and you can um, backslash OCI. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, do you have any other additional programs for young adults who are like college age? For those of us that are 18. Yes, we do. Um, we have also our outdoor, our, our outdoor recreation leadership program for, is for um, individuals 18 and up. That particular program is geared towards um, adults who work with young people and who want to um, uh, take people out on outings and engage in outdoor activities. It's geared toward um, giving the skill sets similar to what you see with OIC, but it, it speaks to how you work with 
60 or 30 people, what you do when you have them, where where you go, um, how, what foods do you do, how do you do it on a budget, how do you set up the kitchens, how do you do all of the activities. It really is about um, taking down those barriers and allowing for them to participate. And it's a great question because one of the things that when they graduate from our outdoor recreation leadership program, they then are entitled to utilize our FAM camp program, which has been in operation since 1996. Um, it is a program where we have uh, trailers in uh, lo- at s- several different locations uh, in a state park, um, and we allow them to utilize those trailers. The trailers include um, enough uh, sleeping bags and tents and sleeping bag liners and um, propane and stoves to accommodate up to 30 campers. Uh, at a site, um, we don't um, charge you f- during the for the during that two years to utilize the equipment with your organization. Um, we don't charge for for any of that. What we require is that you graduate from the class. There is a charge for that, and I'll speak to that momentarily. Um, but the um, we also require that you launder the sleeping bag liners and return them. Um, so that the next groups can do it. And that is unlimited use until, you know, as long as it's available. We certainly don't have um, availability on Fourth of July weekend or Memorial Day or any of the holidays, but um, we do have uh, availability, quite a bit of availability. We have these uh, fam camp trailers located uh, here in the area. We have one at Castaic. We have one at um, Refugio. Um, We have one at... uh, Malibu Creek State Park, also at uh, Leo Carrillo, um, San Simeon Hearst, we have one. We also have uh, one in the desert out uh, in the high desert near Hesperia, and there are three locations out in the desert areas, Hesperia, near Barstow also, and near um, Baker. So there are a number of them. Equally, once you graduate, you can utilize the trailers that are in Northern California. We have them at uh, places like the uh, Calaveras Big Trees State Park, where um, you, some of the largest uh, living redwoods in the world exist. Um, we have them at uh, Sam P. Taylor in the Bay Area, and we have a couple of other, several other locations in Northern California that um, the groups can utilize them. Um, there, there are four, as I mentioned. Uh, you simply need to be a part of the organization um, that you're, you're working with, and uh, the individual who's trained has to be with the group when they go out and utilize the, the program. There is the charge for that program is $200. Uh, it certifies for two years. Um, the money for that goes back into our purchasing of equipment, and it goes into um, uh, it helps us to subsidize the youth programs also. Um, but it um, it does not go into the state parks budget. It it is all about uh, its keeping in program, um, and putting in perspective too, um, uh, taking thirty people camping a group site can go for as much as two hundred dollars a night. So um, it's sort of a a quick return and giving people the opportunity. We just ask that you take people who have never had the opportunity or would like to experience the opportunity so that they can gain a greater appreciation for nature and the experiences that are out there. Any other questions? I have also Dolores Mejia who is with me. She's the representative from the Office of Community Involvement who represents this area also. And um, we're very pleased to, to be here. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. I would like to turn the meeting back to Chair Shao. Thank you, Commissioner Tovey, and thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Again, for anyone interested, that website is www.parks.ca.gov slash OCI. Moving right along to item number six is project reports. The Youth Commission (laughs) undertakes a number of projects during the year, and I will introduce the following commissioners who have chaired the coordination of these projects, and they will present overviews. Uh, Item number 6A is the City Internship Program. Will Commissioner Yi and Laufenberg please give that report? Yes, thank you. 
Um, our city internship fair, which was held last night at the Thousand Oaks Library, was a total success and had a great turnout from both businesses and students. Uh, this year we have some really interesting and fulfilling internships for current juniors, ranging from medical to political fields. A uh, thank you to everyone who joined us at the fair and a special thanks to all of our program partners and liaison school to career educators. If you were not at the fair last night, you are still able to be a part of the program and can apply by accessing the online application on the city webpage at www.toaks.org forward slash city. These are to be turned in by April 3rd. Thank you. And to re reiterate some aspects on the application part, uh, the, a, rem a reminder, quick reminder, this internship is for current junior students only. And uh, if you're applying, please only apply to one internship. And if you're applying as well, make sure that you're available during the time frame of June 19th through uh, July 28th. Again, that's June 19th through July 28th. Remember, uh, if you apply to a business, you, you're doing it through the city program. You're not applying directly with a business. You do it through the application found on toaks.org slash city. Again, that's toaks.org slash city. Again, thank you to everyone who came last night, and I wish you all a good evening. Thank you. Moving on then to item number 6B is the therapeutic dance. Will Commissioner Kern please give this report? Hi everyone, the therapeutic dance is a prom-like experience for young adults with functional disabilities in our community hosted at the Thousand Oaks Teen Center this month on March 25th. Um, our theme this year is Traveling Through Europe and I Am Paris, and I'd like to thank our sponsors, the Thousand Oaks Teen Center, DJ Slick, CRPD Therapeutic Unit, Thousand Oaks City Council, Newbury Park Culinary Division, Performers from Lorena High School, Starbucks, Trader Joe's, Hollywood Storage, and Home Caregivers. This is going to be a wonderful dance, and we would not have been able to do it without your generosity. If you are interested in volunteering at the dance, please contact us at youthcommission at toaks.org or at 805-381-7362. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Kern. Moving right along to item 6C is the Youth Recognition Awards. Will Commissioner Bird please give this report? Hi, everyone. The Youth Recognition Awards are coming up really quickly, and if you don't know what they are, they are the way that the city of Thousand Oaks gives back to its teen volunteers, and um, the deadline for nominations is next Friday, March 10th. This is a great award that looks great on college and job applications, so if you're a teen or a middle schooler who lives in, who lives in the city of Thousand Oaks or who attends high school or middle school, in the city of Thousand Oaks um, and you volunteer your time at any organization, please get yourself nominated through either talking to school counselors or um, talking to the person who runs your volunteering, your volunteer coordinator, um, or if you know someone who you think would be a great person for this award, talk to them, try to get them nominated. It looks awesome, again, on college applications. Um, and that deadline is March 10th, which is next Friday. And that web Applicate that nomination form can be found on our website, which is toaks.org forward slash youth. So please get yourself nominated out by next Friday, March 10th. Thank you. Thank you. Item 60 then is youth master plan implementation. Will Commissioner Emmanuel please give this report? Of course. Our implementation year has uh, gone quite well so far. Our two subcommittees this year are recreation and substance abuse and mental health. Commissioner Katz will now tell us about the Recreation Committee. Hello, my name is Nicole Katz and um, I work on the Recreation Subcommittee. We have really exciting things going on this Friday. We have our Teen $5 Friday at Art Trek. That is this Friday from 7 to 10 p.m. And the theme is karaoke and craft. So we'll be borrowing the lovely Teen Center's karaoke machine. Singing's optional. Um, there will be lots of crafts. You're encouraged to bring your musical instruments, your voice, come hang out for a great night of food, arts and crafts, music, and friends. It's really fun. So that's this Friday at Art Trek from 7 to 10 p.m. and $5 only. Um, the Implementation Committee has also been working on other things as well. We were planning a high school spirit night, which we'll be postponing till next year. So all the local high schools get ready for that. That'll be happening hopefully March of next year, and we'll be reaching out to schools with a date soon. Um, that is all we have. Oh, yes, Commissioner Martinez. I can you say what the craft will be? For, oh, for yes. The We're going to have lots of different music-themed crafts. We're going to have um, something where we make 
I forgot what it was. We were using piano keys to make various different projects. We're going to be painting on top of old music paper and a few other things. I believe there's going to be stamp art. All of it's going to have a musical twist to it. So, yeah, that's it. That's it. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Now Commissioner Moon will tell us about the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Committee. Thank you, Commissioner Emanuel. So February 6th, the Mental Health Implementation had their first event. Uh, we had over 80 adult attendees at our mental health information night with seven adult speakers and 14 speakers. Various mental health issues were covered during the night, and overall, the night was a huge ex success. I'd like to thank everyone who made it possible. First of all, my team for sticking with me th through the entire process. Second, I'd like to thank Rebecca Stallmar for being an amazing adult representative and making all the resources we had available to us. I'd like to thank MovieCo for giving us the wonderful Pepsi Theater during the entire event. And of course, I'd like to thank all our speakers for taking the time to come out during the night and to really care about the community's teens. Unfortunately, our teen chat night, which was going to be hosted on February 25th, had to be canceled due to a lack of attendees. But again, I would like to thank everyone who made the, the Mental Health Information Night possible as it was a huge success. Thanks, Paul. Remember, our next implementation meeting is Wednesday, March 8th at 6 p.m. in the Oak Room. Please come out to help make all of our events possible. Over to you, Chair Shao. <laughs> Thank you very much, Commissioner Emanuel. Item number seven is school and liaison reports. In addition to being an advisory body to City Council, the Youth Commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. Item 7A, we will start out with Associated Student Government. Will Commissioner Kern please introduce this item? The Youth Commission invites representatives, representatives from each of our local high schools and intermediate or middle schools to present information about high school ex for school activities for the purpose of generating a feeling of community spirit. First, I'd like to have Shaylee from Sigmore Canyon. Hello. Um, so first, this Friday is our trimester to dance. It's 50s theme, so poodle skirts and all that fun stuff. We're going to have um, inflatables and other activities with food and drinks such as Billy D's and Dippin' Dots. And this is also a pack day, which is like spirit days, but um, to, work for, to, to work towards inflatables, Jamba Juice, and pizza at lunch to, at the end of the year. And um, the pack day is 50s theme. And then our Trimester 2 Spirit Rally was last Friday. It was a really good success, and all the kids got into it. We had a lot of activities, and um, everyone come down from the crowds to participate in it. Our teacher luncheon, when we give thanks to our teachers for everything they do for us, is tomorrow, where we give them, um, we serve them lunch and dessert, and just give thanks. And then our more upcoming pack days, along with 50 Stay, is whiteout day and the St. Patrick's the green so you don't get pinched. <laughs> um, and then we have music at lunch every Wednesday and Friday. Our new theme is going to be every Wednesday we're going to have a theme like country, like electric, I think, I don't know, like different themes for every um, day. And then Fridays will just be today's hits like pop and stuff. Um, we have LTAs also every other week, which are lunchtime activities. Last week, we had um, the Lip Sync LTA, and that one was one of our best successes yet. And then we also, on St. Patrick's Day, that's going to be really fun, we have um, the Four Leaf Clover Hunt. And um, also, we have our play coming up. We're going to, this is the first play for, like, middle school that Sycamore Canyon has ever done. Um, it's called Fairy Tales Unbridged. One of our um, students in ASB this year, Charlie Derrickson, she has her um, play teacher come and teach students that want to be in the play the roles and stuff. We will be rehearsing all of March, and the performance will be beginning of April. And then we're also getting ready for the eighth grade saying goodbye, um, raising, doing fundraisers for the eighth grade dance and the eighth grade ceremony. And lastly, um, our very first art show for the middle school too is going to be in early April and just for all the people who aren't necessarily singers for the talent show or like dancers for them to do art. So thank you. 
Thank you. Up next, we have Riley from Redwood Middle School. Okay, so to recap, it, on the 9th of February, we, the fifth graders came to our school to check it out, plan for their future, and all that stuff. On the 10th, we had a fandom day, and a lot of kids really like that. They like showing out what kind of groups of things they're in. From the 13th to the 24th, we had Pennies for Patients, where we got all the students to raise awareness for kids with blood cancer. That we don't have the final amount yet, but I'm sure it did great. Now, from the 21st to the 24th, we had Pink Shirt Week, where we'd wear pink the entire week to promote kindness and anti-bullying. And on the 23rd, ASB had the bright idea to have a lunchtime activity without planning anything. Surprisingly, <laughs> it went well, so we did it again on the 24th. Now in March, we have Superhero Day on the 10th, where you can dress up as a superhero or just wear a shirt of one. That's fine, too. On the 10th, we are having a lunchtime activity called Trivia Pie Suit, where me and fellow ASBers will be sitting in chairs, and the audience will have to answer trivia questions, and if they get it right, they throw pie at us. <laughs> Outdoor school, the first group will be going from the 14th to the 17th, for the sixth graders and for the, all the sixth graders who are still here they will be going to the getty on the 15th and the 17th and also on the 17th is a wear green cody celebrating saint patrick's day then the second group for outdoor school will be going on the 21st to the 24th and to all of the other sixth graders who are still here the third group for getty will be going on the 23rd and then they will also be going again on the 24th to celebrate March Madness, we are having a lunchtime activity from the 27th to the 31st, and also on the 31st, we will be having a spring dance. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Sean from St. Pascal Balon. Hello. So today we had our Ash Wednesday service. To represent the start of Lent, we received ashes on our forehead. That went well. And tomorrow we have our seventh grade retreat. It is Latin, the Lent Latin themed. And the 13th is sixth grade retreat because they're going to outdoor school the, that week, so they're preparing for it. And the eighth grade retreat is March 21st from 10.15 to 2.30 in our parish hall. And we're bringing in seniors to talk about high school. And our annual jogathon is March 10th. It will be a half day, and everyone's looking forward to it, and we're raising money. And the Irish Dance Assembly will be on March 13th at 115 in the hall, where we have Irish dancers from around the city come and dance. Our St. Patrick's Spirit Day is March 16th, where we'll have a, pop, pop, a popcorn picnic, and there will be a gold coin at the bottom of one popcorn of, in each class, and the, win, and the person that gets a gold coin will, have, will get a free ice cream. And our, the eighth grade rummage sale is coming up on March 18th on Columbia Drive at St. Pascal's, and there's a bunch of stuff, so it's really fun. And report cards go home March 20th, and our an, our annual spring sing is April six at one to seven in the hall, and it's a original play by Mr. Leslie from our school. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Join Ivy from Kalina Middle School. Hi, my name is Ivy Slasher, and I'm an eighth grade ASB and web member at Kalina Middle School. We had a lot of activities at our school within the last month. To begin, Webb made little goodie bags for the sixth graders as going away gifts when they went to outdoor school. We, as in Webb, all, uh, took little burlap bags, drew tic-tac-toe boards on them, and put little rocks with X's and O's in the bags. Webb also made Rice Krispie treats at the beginning of the month for all the sixth graders as Valentine's Day treats. Earlier this week, our top math students competed in the California Math League exam. Uh, but unfortunately, we have not gotten the results back yet. Today, Student PTSA met to discuss the, their spring party with the special needs kids. We filled Easter eggs with little goodies for the parties and wrote some nice cards. Also, um, Typecast, our school play, was on February 3rd and 4th, and it was a really good success. A lot of people came. 
Finally, later this month, the incoming sixth graders will be coming to visit Kalina and Webb is starting to prepare by coming up with ideas for LTAs, lunchtime activities, and tour ideas. Thank you. Hi, my name is Joy Collins. I'm ASB president and a student in Webb. Kalina recently had their ASB elections and later that week we got a hydration station. Yay! <laughs> Yearbook ASB hid hearts around the school with each student's name on it for Valentine's Day. On February 10th, we had our winter dance, but unfortunately it rained all afternoon and into the night, so it was a <laughs> low turnout. <laughs> this week, our ASB teachers went to a Cata Castle Leadership Conference, and we'll be back next Monday. Um, and trimester two is ending, so our Try to Spirit Rally is next Friday, March 10th. And lastly, on March 17th, we'll be wearing green for St. Patrick's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Up next, we have Claire from Lorena. Hi, my name is Claire Scheller, and I'm the ASB president of Lorena High School. This week, we had our third annual Mi Multicultural Day. At lunch, each club sold a food from a different culture, and students even had the opportunity to learn African dance at lunch. We then had an assembly during which students shared their cultural backgrounds through K-pop performances, Russian songs, other dances, etc. This week is the last week of our third quarter, and Lorena is having its annual gala this weekend to start the fourth quarter. During, month, during March, our student body is looking forward to its Spring Spirit Week. During this week, each grade will compete with a song to the theme early 2000s at our lip sync rally, a favorite Lorena tradition. We will also have other spirit days such as Yacht Day and Jersey Day. In the arts realm, our dance team will have its showcase this month, as well as our regent performers doing their performance to the outsiders for the spring play. Thank you. Next, we have Nicole Katz from Newray Park High School. Hello. Unfortunately, everybody's favorite, Anthony Wormers, couldn't come tonight, so I'll be giving uh, the report for him. I go to Newbury Park High School as well, so I have a few things uh, to report. Our Student One Acts are going on March 31st through April 1st. These are um, acted, written, and directed by students at Newbury Park High School, so it's really interesting really funny um every year holds different surprises so i would definitely recommend coming to these we have several going on and i'm hearing great things already and everybody's working really hard so come see those on march 31st through april 1st uh, we have our ib dance concert this friday at seven o'clock in our pack it is five dollars and dances are choreographed by the dance team students as well as our ib dance students and these dances will feature different styles from all around the world uh, we have our jazz festival on March 10th and 11th, performed by our jazz band, so come and support them. I believe that is also in the pack, so that should be exciting. We have our 18-hour play festival on March 25th, which is an exciting event. Students get to school at about 3 in the morning to start writing plays and until about nine o'clock students are on campus so in that time period plays are written they're directed actors are selected and then we perform a show around like eight o'clock for the whole community to come out and watch and it's quite interesting I, I, yes very interesting <laughs> lots of fun and i believe that's five dollars at the door as well and that is on march 25th and lastly we have international day this friday which is a very exciting event this is a great opportunity for students to experience diversity and cultures from all around the world on our campus um, different clubs will be selling foods from a country they select from around the world so clubs will be fundraising and selling delicious foods we'll have different performances from dance uh, dance groups and band groups, etc. So it should be a great turnout this Friday. Thank you. And lastly, I would like to have Diego from Oaks Christian. Hello, I'm Diego. I go to Oaks Christian. I'm a sophomore. And uh, in the month, this month um, marks open registration for our middle school and high school. Uh, this opens spring sports, so uh, baseball, boys volleyball, girls water polo, boys golf. There's a lot of sports in the spring. <laughs> uh, this is also the first season with a new baseball coaching staff, so it'll be pretty interesting. 
Um, this also closes winter sports seasons. Our boys basketball team lost in the second round of playoffs. And our girls basketball team just lost in, I think, the quarterfinals. So, pretty good run. Um, we had 30 uh, student athletes sign a letter of intent this year for college, which was our highest yet. So, pretty proud of them. Um, we have our Cinderella play that our theater program is hosting next week. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, I believe. And today at our leadership forum, we had the president of Westmont University, uh, Dr. Gail Beebe, speak to us, and he donated over a thousand bucks to the school for all the students on leadership. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Chair Shao. Thank you. Moving right along to item number 7B is the Teen Century Advisory Council will commission your cats. Please give this report. Sure. Okay. So spring is a very busy time for the Teen Center. We have trips, classes, leagues, special events, and lots more. Here are a few of the highlights. Our middle school boys volleyball league is concluding tonight as we speak. Girls basketball concludes next week. And our boys high school hoops league just started Saturday with more than 16 teams. We have a St. Patrick's Day dance coming next Saturday, the 11th, for 7th and 8th graders only, and will be from 7 to 10 p.m. Features include the phenomenal DJ Slick playing the best music with a laser light show, video show, and lasers, free pizza, <laughs> tons of confetti, giveaways, and lots more. Admission is $10 at the door. Over spring break, we'll be going to Magic Mountain, the Venice Beach Skate Park, and we will also be offering a Mike Waters co-ed volleyball camp. And finally, tomorrow night, we will put the smackdown on the seniors in the annual Senior vs. Teen Pool Tournament. Last year, we squeaked out a win. This year, we expect total domination. Playing will commence at the Global, t uh, Global Center and will include a delicious dinner for all players. We encourage everyone to stay up to date with us by visiting our website, thousandoaksteencenter.com. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Katz. We're going to move right on then to item 7C, which is the Thousand Oaks Library Teen Advisory League, also known as TOTAL. <laughs> Will Commissioner Nash please give this report? Hi. So on March 12th um, at 2 p.m., Martha Abby Miller will be speaking at the Thousand Oaks Library and portraying missionary Francis Landers. This should be a very fun performance. Um, in addition, the Thousand Oaks Library is presenting um, the Women History Project on Wednesday, March 8th at 6 p.m., where students will be portraying famous women in history. Beyond these great programs at the library this month, the library is always available for free tutoring, or tutoring and homework help. Um, the library is a great resource for all teens, so we hope to see you there this month. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Nash. Thank you. Um, our last section of the meeting is Commissioner Comments. Will Commissioner Shea please introduce this item? This is the last portion of our meeting where commissioners can provide information, comments, or announcements, which no action by the commissioner will be taken. At this time, are there any commissioner comments? <coughs> commissioner. If you're interested in keeping up to date on any youth commission happenings, feel free to like the youth commission on Facebook at TO Youth Commission, and also follow us on Twitter at TO Youth. Thank you. Are there any others? Chair Shao? Um, I have actually quite a few things. First, I want to go ahead and thank all of our ASU representatives for coming out tonight. Um, once again, keep your eyes peeled because our Youth Commission application will be dropping sometime in the next few months, and we would love to have you guys apply. Um, April 1st, that's when they will come out. Okay, so um, just a few different things. This Saturday is the s annual suicide walk at CLU, um, and it's a really important event in terms of bringing an open conversation about the mental health stigma. So I highly encourage anyone watching this to look into the CLU suicide walk that is happening this Saturday at CLU at 9 a.m. And we do have a team. It's called The Young and the Rest of Us. Um, also, shout out to Westlake High School mock trial team who are currently competing right now at the semifinals and the Ventura County um, Courthouse. They placed, um, they're currently first ranked. Um, Lorena is second. <laughs> kidding, kidding. Um, like not for long. Um, we'll see. Um, 
but hope fingers crossed for them. And lastly, March 9th and March 10th, which is Thursday and Friday next week, Westlake is going to be having their annual senior showcase. Um, yours truly will be in it, so maybe come out and see it. Um, March 9th and 10th, again, at 7 p.m. And if you want to buy tickets in advance, you can go to www.conejousd.org slash WHS. Thank you. Are there any others? Commissioner Katz? Just to, I uh, just want to remind you all, $5 Friday is this Friday, 7 to 10 p.m. at Art Track, Karaoke, Art Trek, my bad, Karaoke and Crafts. It's going to be lots of fun. Everybody who comes enjoys it. So I hope to see you guys out there, and I hope to see some of our returning participants. And also, we have on March 19th, uh, TEDx Youth at Conejo come out and support. It's going to be uh, in the Thousand Oaks High School pack on March 19th. We have some awesome speakers already composed of teens from our Conejo Valley area, and this event only happens once a year in our area, so I definitely would not miss it. This is a great opportunity to learn about new ideas, new ways of life, and it should be really great. So, hope to see you there. Okay, are the Commissioner Bird? Um, I want to do one final plug for youth recognition nominations. Uh, that form is on our website, toaks dot org forward slash youth and then also wish luck to all the seniors who are getting back from colleges this month i hope we all end up somewhere happy um it's kind of weird that this time next month we'll have like, a vague idea at least of where we have options to go it um so i just wish luck to everyone in this time thank you thank you are there any more commissioner comments all right back to you chair Shao. thank you if you would like any information about the Youth Commission or have questions about the agenda items discussed today, please call 805-381-7362 or email youthcommission at toaks.org or like the on Facebook or follow us on Twitter at TOU. Uh, there being no further business to come before the Commission, the Youth Commission meeting is adjourned to our next regular meeting. Mm -hmm.